Guten Tag, I'm Markus with Hoffman Machine Company and in this video I will show you how to calibrate the displays on your Hoffman MU3PD pneumatic dovetail routing machine. Here we're going to show you how to calibrate the digital display on your MU3 digital machine. When you move this center plate in and out, the display changes. And in order to get an accurate reading, we need to set our starting point correctly. And to do that, we slide our fence plate all the way forward until it can't go any further. There's a positive stop and it's very close to the bit. And we lock it in place with the lever. Make sure you use the mounting hole in the table that is closest to the router bit so that you're truly all the way forward. And then on the top display, in this case, we press F the function button for about three seconds and you see how it changes to parameter mode and the parameters allow us to adjust the display uh, the way we like it. In this case for example parameter one is the counting direction so as you move your miter plate towards you the number that's displayed needs to increase. Should the number decrease that parameter that needs to be changed. The standard setting is one um, but if it were switched to zero, it would count uh, in the other direction. Parameter two, and all these parameters are explained in the manual, by the way. Parameter two is the display mode. Uh, if it's set to zero, it will display in millimeters. Uh, set to one, it will display in inches, and so on. Parameter three is our decimal point. We want that set at two. Parameter four is the sleep mode. Uh, if it's set to a zero, 00, the display is always on, but it will run down the battery pretty quickly. If it's set to zero, 01, uh, it is in sleep mode on and it'll go to sleep after it's not being used for a while. Five is uh, push button lock options. You best leave it as it is. Uh, seven is the resolution. Uh, that depends on the magnetic tape that's being used. The factory setting is zero. 8 is the multiplication factor, that should be left at 1.0000 and parameter 9 is the one we're after. This is our reference point, basically the starting point. So I have my plate all the way forward, I have it locked in place and I want to change that <coughs> to 3.2 millimeters. And with the set button I select which digit I want to change and with the incremental and absolute button I can change the digit every time I push it, it changes by one. Like I said, I want to switch this to 3.2. Oops, that was already at 2. And the last one we set to 0. Press F again until we're back in display mode. And now, if we press F and set at the same time, our reference is locked in. It is important that you do not move your center plate when you adjust your reference value and then when you press F and set to bring that forward. So as I now pull the plate back towards me, the number increases and decreases and when I'm all the way forward, that's my reference point. Now, if you take your center plate off <coughs> because you use your square stop to do some butt joints or you put a tall center plate on to do uh, processed hollow material and then you drop the center plate back on here you can put it on anywhere you want simply slide it all the way forward again it's a good idea to lock it <coughs> now you see that you have a, a negative number in this case you simply press F and set again and that brings you back to your starting point. So once you have the 3.2 programmed in your display, it is very easy to get back to the correct starting point. Even if you take your plate off, you drop it back on. All you have to remember is when you put the plate back on, you have to slide it forward, lock it, press F and set together, and you're good to go. After we've calibrated our display, it's always a good idea to double check and make sure our settings are correct. For that, we'll use a piece of molding that's mitered and we'll mark, place a pencil mark here 
a given distance from the tip of the miter. I like to use calipers for that, but a, uh, a ruler will work as well. And you can set it to, you know, I'll use in this case, I'm going to use 40 millimeters. And then simply place a pencil mark here. Light colored molding works better. And now I put my material on, on the table. And as I move my center fence blade in and out, I'll slide it until my pencil mark is lined up perfectly with the center line locator. Which is I have right about here. And my display is at 40 millimeters. So that is a correct setting. And this is also how you use your display for the key locations. Let's say this is your molding number 1234. And in this case, you see that 40 millimeters from the tip is a good setting for your first keyway. You make yourself a chart. I've done one, two, three, four. First keyway at 40 millimeter. On a wide piece of molding like this, you always want to use two keys, so you simply readjust it for your second key location. In this case, we set it up to, let's say here, 75. Right on your, um, on your chart, 75 millimeters for the second keyway and then also you record your routing heights. If the molding is profiled, you may use a shorter key here and a longer key here. And this is how you create your own chart as you go along for any given molding that you have. And the advantage is that if you then make a frame or join that same molding again at a point in the future, you or the employees don't have to guess or determine exactly where to put those keys, they can simply look on the chart and get the same results that you've gotten in the past. It also allows you, that's especially important for picture frames, let's say you machine all the parts for a frame and you go to assemble the frame and as you assemble it you notice that one piece has a scratch and you need to redo one piece. You cut it on your miter saw, you bring it back to your Hoffman of the routing machine and with the digital displays, you find the same settings again that you've used for the other three pieces and your replacement piece will fit perfectly with the parts that you already have on your assembly table. Without the digital display on the machine, it is very difficult to find the exact locations again for the replacement part to match the others and oftentimes you end up actually making four new parts. So this will save that. This is the main advantage of the digital displays, is the repeatability and the accuracy of the keywords. Okay, after we've set our display for the keyway location here on our MU3 PD, we also need to set the keyway for our routing stroke. And basically what we need to find as our zero point is the point when that router bit is just at the top of the keyway when it's just touching the molding that is our zero point and the way to find that is place a piece of molding on the machine lower the hold down set our routing height rod here to zero on the scale put our safety glasses on and make a cut and see what we got We see that the bit is just touching or just kissing the underside of the molding. That is the setting that we like. So we know that this is our zero point. We go back into our display in the parameter setting with, by pressing the F button and go back down to parameter 9 which is our reference number. And parameter 9 is already set to all zeros. If you have any number here that's other than zero, select it with set and then by pressing incremental and absolute, increase it until you have all zeros. Go back by pressing F and then press F and set at the same time to set your display to zero. And now if we raise our routing height adjustment rod up or down, we'll see how the display changes accordingly. And that is the setting that we want. 
So this is how you calibrate the routing height display on your MU3PD. Uh, keep in mind right now I have a W1 router bit. If you change router bits, especially if you go from 1 to 3 uh, or from 1 to 2, the, uh, the larger bits, a bigger diameter, so they will touch that molding sooner than the smaller bit. In other words, you may have to reset your zero point to get a very accurate reading. Most of the time, you can leave it as is because we generally, on molding like this, we would use a key that stops about an eighth of an inch before breaking all the way through. And so, if that setting is a little off, it's not a 